Hello, everybody. My name is Don Graves. I am the president of the Gila Native Plant Society. Remember, every day is Earth Day. This short video, as it named, implies, how to plant a native plant. We're going to take you from start to finish, go through all the steps, all the various things that you need to consider to be successful. Why do we want to plant native plants? Well, for one thing, they are adapted to live in very close association with our native pollinators, like this four-spot skipper. Our native plants are adapted to our climate. Sometimes it's very hot. Sometimes it's, it's wet, for example, during monsoon. Our native plants are adapted to the soil of our area. They're adapted to the amount of water we get. They're adapted to temperature. So all of these things together make native plants a great choice for your garden or your landscape project. Let me introduce you to our new beginner's guide to planting native perennials of the Gila region. We've chosen 26 plants that are easy to grow or relatively easy to grow in our region. These 26 plants exhibit a long range of bloom times. For example, some of the plants in the guide bloom in the early spring, some of them later in the spring, some of them in the summer, some of them later in the fall. There's also a wide range of colors exhibited in these 26 plants. Some are red, some are blue, some are pink, some are white, etc. Getting in a little deeper into the guide, many, many important characteristics to consider here. Where do you put your plant? How do you dig your hole? How big do you, or wide do you make it? How deep do you make it? What about soil moisture? How do we decide when to water? Where do we put it? Do we put it in the sun? Does it like shade, etc.? And then how do we care for our native plant so that we make sure that it is established and healthy? We've chosen the canyon penstemon or desert beard tongue to plant. And on the left diagrams, we'll show in the top left, this is an overview, kind of the habit of the plant as you're standing back and looking at it once it's mature and established. And then the large diagram shows us the flowers and any fruits and how the leaves are arranged on the stem, etc. So on the right side, we'll see the Golden Desert Beard Tongue Canyon Penstemon. Those are the common names. Um, its scientific name is Penstemon Pseudospectabilis, and it's in the Plantagenaceae family. We know the bloom time is spring-summer. It likes full sun to part sun, doesn't require a lot of water. The soil is sandy, gravelly, that's what it likes. There's a description of the flower, how tall will it be, how wide will it be, and then there are, there's information on the pollinators. For example, this case, hummingbirds and small native bees um, are important pollinators of this penstemon. Let's get out into the yard and talk with our good friend Elroy, who's going to talk to us about drainage. Well, I tell people what they should do is take and just dig a hole. Well, not a big one, but a dig a hole and put some water in it in the evening. And if there's water in the morning in the hole, then you got clay soil. I know we have hard soil, but it's not clay for the most part. And so, anyway, this is just a small hole. Fill it up with water like I'm going to do here, but this is what you should do, just take and fill it up with water, and uh, if that still has water in it in the morning, then you got some problems, otherwise you don't. Elroy and I wandered around the garden making recordings for about an hour, then returned to the hole to see that there was no standing water in the hole after one hour, indicating fairly good drainage. So you've seen the way Elroy checks for drainage. And uh, we're going to use a method here that's similar to what Elroy was doing. 
one of the things that we have here, one of the problems that many of you are going to have is caliche. It's a real hard layer, you know, down five or six inches, and then boom, you hit this caliche, which is really nothing more than some calcium carbonate, which is mineral, and it accumulates. That caliche will absorb some water, so we're going to take advantage of that. So I have um, Doug with the number two shovel, and I'm going to um, add a little water to this hole that I've dug. And, you know, just depending on how big um, your plant is, is how big you want that. Generally speaking, you'd like to have your um, the width of your hole be about twice as wide as, you know, the width of the plant you're planting. So I'm going to take the rock bar, which is really nothing more than a very, very heavy steel chisel, and I'm going to start to break up that caliche. And I'm going to just work my way around the hole, chop around, chop around, and um, since that caliche is wet, um, that rock bar will sink in there. And then I'll take my number two and pull a little bit of that um, soil out. Now, that rock bar is also great. You know, it's called a rock bar. If you run into some rocks, big or small, and you can get on the edge of that, that rock bar will help you um, like a lever to, to um, pry those those pieces of rock out. So dig down little by little until you get down, I don't know, five or six inches deeper than your potted plant. And um, then I add some rock, maybe put some of the pieces of caliche back in there, and then some soil ready for planting what i'd like to do is to have the uh, the top of my potted plant be equal you know at the same level as the soil around it here's our the plant we spoke about earlier our penstemon and um so i'm just going to now some of these sometimes these penstemons um you could pull this out and you could actually separate this one you know, and maybe this one, you know, and get two or three plants from one. And that's pretty typical with this penstemon. Um, but we're just going to plant the whole thing um, and not talk much about separating. So I just kind of like to pull that plant out, and you can see the roots. And uh, I've got the, we've got the hole prepared. And pretty much, um, you know, we checked for drainage and caliche and everything. And up on this mound, of course, it's pretty well um, drained because um, we, we built this mound. Um, but your situation will be different. But once your site is prepared, you know, get that, um, your um, hole deep enough to, uh, so we're going to put the soil up just um, so that the top of the soil here matches the top of the soil in your planting area. So you have to adjust a little bit. And I like to just put some soil around the whole plant and then just sort of work that in. Not, you know, I don't push too hard, but I don't want to have a whole bunch of air pockets in there either. So I'll just keep Pulling the soil out and um, putting it around, packing it in around. Gotta watch out, we've got this agave here that will get you. So once I've got the soil around, this is an area that um, the soil um, is pretty good up here, and it'll stay moist for a while. It's uh, you know we we have the uh, advantage of having um, better soil than many people do, but you want to think about when it rains, and um, so I just like to make a little bit of a, a hump here so that when it rains
that the, the water, the moisture, is going to be in this little depression sort of around the plant. And that'll change, of course, and fill in as time goes by. But we just want this plant to get a good start. Okay? So you can see my little hook that I built around is holding the water. You can see that it's um, well drained. And what's nice here is that that water goes down. If there are any air pockets there that I haven't got to, this is sort of what Elroy Limerick says, watering in the plant. So we've watered it in. And uh, give her another nice little shot of water. And then I'll come back, you know, every couple of days, depending on what the, um, the weather is like and just check on it. I usually just stick my finger down in and determine if it's really, really dry or moist because th that's the critical time for these plants is right when you plant them, you know, in that first six months or even year, you just kind of have to um, get them established. They need time to get those roots out because um, when you, even when you take this out of the pot, sometimes you destroy some of these little root hairs that are really vital in um, collecting water. And they're really small. And you can barely see them. And some of them are microscopic. So you won't know that you're damaging them. But anytime you replant, transplant something, you, you do. Um, so then what I would do is, uh, is put some mulch. Or in this case, we're using some rock. That's a, a rock mulch, if you will. Okay. We use the rock mulch, but many people simply use some bark or a mulch made out of wood chips, and you see some pine needles, etc. About three inches is a good depth for mulch around your plant. It'll help retain moisture. Now that you know how to plant a native plant, where are you going to go to find one? Well, we have some local sources for native plants. Lone Mountain Natives, Country Girls Nursery, both in Silver City, and Gabriel Feldman's Honey Hawk Homestead out in the Mimbris. COVID willing, we plan on resuming our annual native plant sale in mid-September. We'll have five or six vineyards of quality native plants adapted to our local conditions. Planting just before our hottest, driest weather is probably not the best idea. April, May, and June, boy, those are really hot, dry months. Fall is really the best time to plant. We've got monsoon rains, it's much cooler, and it gives those plants a nice start as they transition into winter. So now you know how to plant a native plant, and you know where to go to find native plants locally, how do you get a copy of our beginner's guide to planting native perennials of the Gila region? Well, there are four ways to get that guide. You can go to Lone Mountain Natives booth at the Silver City Farmer's Market. You could go to Country Girls Nursery. You can go to the Grant County Art Guild downtown Silver City, or you could get it on the Gila Native Plant Society website at gilanps.org. The cost is $5, which is basically what it costs us to produce the guide.